Hello, my name is Gabby Desjardins and I work in Dr. Catherine Deal's lab. The first aim of this project is to develop a high throughput method for screening genetically encodable biosensors. The second aim of this project is to explore yellow and blue fluorescent proteins within the acetyl coa biosensor. Metabolite concentration is one of the mechanisms that regulate post-translational modifications, and these post-translational modifications can lead to downstream effects such as the formation of tumorigenic cells. Therefore, quantifying cellular metabolites is important. However, there are limitations to the current quantification methods. The DL lab has developed a genetically encodable biosensor for acetyl-CoA that uses circularly permuted green fluorescent protein as a reporting domain and PAN-Z as a binding domain, named Pancake, that can quantify acetyl-CoA levels in real time. In AIM-1, we, we attempted to develop a high-throughput screening method that will allow researchers to identify and optimize metabolite biosensors at a faster rate. Since many metabolites are not membrane permeable, we will localize the biosensor to the outer membrane surface of E. coli cells. This will allow researchers to, screen, researchers to screen biosensor functionality by bypassing the protein purification step. In AIM-2, we explored the effects of different colored fluorescent proteins as a reporting domain, so researchers can multiplex with other sensors. This first figure shows a schematic of a dual fluorescence reporting method with fluorescence microscopy. We use the natural fluorescence of CPGFP, also known as FITC, with excitation of 495 nanometers and emission of 519 nanometers, and an anti-GFP antibody called Alexaflor 594, also known as AF594, with excitation of 590 nanometers and emission of 618 nanometers. These figures show the Alexafluor 594 excitation, FIT-C excitation, and phase contrast merge micrographs, and all fluorescence levels were normalized to the cytoplasmic CPGFP, which is the center figure, also known as figure D. The kinase A, also known as the chi A, was the surface display mechanism we used, and it did not fluoresce above background levels compared to the pan-Z, which was the negative control. This suggests that the surface display did not occur as we had intended. However, we did not have a proper positive control for the Alexafluor 594, so we took a previously reported green fluorescent protein surface display domain called lpp omp a and fused it to the CPGFP that we were using. The same Alexafluor 594 staining protocol was used, but this time the results were visualized using flow cytometry. The results suggested that either the current method of quantifying surface display was not working or the E. coli cells were not properly displaying the desired surface display protein. So we turned to an alternative method using a proteinase K treatment. Proteinase K is an enzyme that non-specifically cleaves peptide bonds. We subjected the LPP omp a CPGFP expressing cells to 0, 5, 10, and 15 millimolar concentrations of proteinase K followed by a wash then analyzed on flow cytometry. We compared these to 0 and 15 millimolar treatment of the cytoplasmic CPGFP as a control and both treatments of the cytoplasmic CPGFP had about the same levels of fluorescence for both treatments. Alternatively, the E. coli cells expressing LPP omp a CPGFP subjected to 5, 10, and 15 millimolar treatments of proteinase K had lower fluorescence than a small portion of the 0 millimolar treated cells. This suggests that some of the proteins being expressed with the CPGFP are localized to the outer membrane surface of the cell because with the 0 millimolar they would not be cleaved because they were not subjected to the proteinase K treatment, whereas the 5, 10, and 15 millimolar were, and they don't have any fluorescence. However, the LPP omp a fluorescence levels were much lower than the cytoplasmic CPGFP control, so we tested a final surface display mechanism called ADA1. The cytoplasmic CPGFP and PANZ con controls were consistent with previous tests, but the LPP, OMP, A, CPGFP, and ADA1 constructs did not fluoresce above the PANZ levels. Since the LPP, OMP, A, CPGFP construct did not fluoresce as it had in previous trials, there may have been a handling error during processing, so we will need to perform another trial to make further conclusions. Finally, the biosensor uses a circularly permuted fluorescent protein as a reporting domain and a protein called pansy as the acetyl-CoA binding domain. The addition, of, the addition and binding of acetyl-CoA will induce a conformational change in the biosensor that increases the amount of fluorescence. For this, we named the yellow fluorescent protein biosensor as banana pancake and the blue fluorescent protein biosensor as blueberry pancake. So the 
banana pancake had a 26.2% fold increase and the yellow fluorescent protein had a 3.67% fold increase when we added one millimolar acetyl-CoA, while the blueberry pancake sensor had a 7.35% fold increase and the blue fluorescent protein control had a 7.15% fold increase. These suggested that yellow may serve as an alternative candidate biosensor, however blue will need further optimization for proper functionality. I mentioned these conclusions throughout the presentation, so in the future work we will consider an alternative host organism such as S. cervicea for surface display, and finally we will test red fluorescent protein as an alternative color for the biosensor. I also wanted to say thank you so much for watching this presentation.